Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. Today I'm doing something I have never done before, but I've seen it done on other channels, and so I'm going to take a stab at it myself. I'm going to do a reaction video. And uh, this particular time I'm going to be reacting to a video by uh, Giraffe Neck Mark, it's a guy that I watch quite a bit, and I will leave a link to his channel in the description. Um, he's a very entertaining guy. I love watching, watching Mark's channel. And uh, he is going to be ranking the Major League Baseball teams based on the early returns in 2022, not only based on how they've done so far, but how he thinks they're going to finish up. And I'll be very interested to see what he says about my Chicago White Sox. But anyway, um, after, uh, like every few teams, I suppose, I'll stop the video and um, comment on, um, you, know, where he, you know, where he has the various teams that he put um, in their place. So let's get on with it and start um, ranking all the teams in Major League Baseball, Baseball based, based on 2022 20 performance, as, as well as how good I actually think, think they're going to be at the end of the year. Some, some teams, teams I've changed my mind on, like the Angels, Angels they've impressed me. me. But then there's but some teams, teams that I just don't believe the hype right now. So we're going to hop, hop onto the tier list. I'm going to tell you what I think about all these teams. And of course, I want to know your guys' opinions down in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm going to be replying to comments for like the first hour or so. So let's have a conversation down there. Let's talk. Drop a like on the video if you do enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the baseball content coming at you. And I know I've been a little bit slacking. It's coming. Don't worry. Follow me on all my social media at Giraffe Mark. Links in the description. And let's hop into this. So you're looking at the tier list, and I changed up the names a little bit. We're not doing SA, all those grades and letters. This is cool. That's hard. Let's do words instead. We've got Elite Tier, Contender, Postseason Team, On the Bubble, Not Terrible, Cheeks, Bad, Sorry. I think you get the gist here. This seems to make sense to me. I hope it makes sense to you. First, we've got the New York Yankees. At the time of recording this, they're 12 and 6. They are a very good team. I don't know if I want to put them in a league, but they are pitching extremely well. And I don't even think their offense has really clicked yet. I'm really, really tempted to put them in a league. I think right now, at the absolute worst, they're contender. But I think right now, I'll throw the Yankees in a the league. They're pitching and hitting fairly well. The hitting could definitely get better, but the pitching has been cash money. The bullpen's great. I think the Yankees are an elite team right now. The Seattle Mariners. The Mariners, 11 and 7, playing pretty good baseball. They're scoring some runs and they're pitching really well. Logan Gilbert's looked absolutely incredible. High France on the offensive side is carrying the weight. While you haven't gotten production out of the young guys like Julio and Jared Kelnick, and maybe some of the pitching has let you down a little bit at times. The Mariners are still a very good team. I don't feel like currently the way they're built as a roster that they are a contender, but I do think that they are a postseason team. I think that the way they're playing, team that they have, they should be in the playoffs by the end of the year. Contender, of course, means like I think they have a chance to win the World Series based on what they are right now, and Elite is like favorites. The Tampa Bay Rays. The Rays are another confusing team because they're doing Rays baseball, but they just don't have the pitching that they had in the past that really carried them, and they're still 10-8. and eight. Like, I think they're probably playing their worst stretch of baseball that we've seen in a while, and they are still above 500, still a very good team. I don't think I'm going to put them in contender. I think I'm going to put them right behind the Mariners in postseason team. They are still good. They are still great. Wander Franco is just unbelievably good, and I love Shane McClanahan. I think they're very much a postseason team still. Toronto Blue Jays. I think if you would have asked me at the beginning of the year, the Toronto Blue Jays could have snuck up into this elite category. But the pitching has definitely been shaky. Outside of Kevin Gosman, it's not been the greatest. Now, they are still hitting. You still got Vlad. Oh, George Springer, Gurriel. I know Teoscar went down. That does hurt. But this roster is still loaded from an offensive standpoint, and Matt Chapman is starting to look maybe a little bit better than we thought he was going to look. I'm going to put the Jays in the contender category. I do think that they still have a World Series capable roster, but based on how they're playing right now, and based on how shaking the pitching has been, especially with Barrios not looking that sharp and Hinjin Ryu, I'm definitely pumping the brakes a little bit on Toronto. The all right, so um, going over what he's got here so far, um, I would say my only disagreement. Well, I've got two. I got two disagreements. I think he did. I, I think he did quite well with uh, Toronto, putting Toronto as a contender. He a lot of the points that he made about Toronto are are quite true, um, and uh, the and the and the Mariners. But the Yankees and the Rays, I don't know. I don't think I would make the Yankees an elite team. If elite means that you're favored to win the World Series, I don't 
I don't think that what the Yankees have done so far pitching wise is something that's sustainable for them. Um, and I think that their, you know, team full of DHs is going to come back to haunt them. So I would put the Yankees down in contender along with Toronto. And the Rays, I don't know if they're a postseason team. I think I would make them, they're kind of like a bubble between postseason and on the bubble. Um, because the Rays, I think the Rays have just overperformed the past few years. They've overperformed what their roster is. And I think this year it's finally coming back to nip them, you know, in the way that they construct their rosters and cut um, player salary by getting rid of players that are expected to make good money. And um, I think that's going to come back to haunt them this year. I would probably right now put the Rays in on the bubble. But uh, other than that, yeah, you know, good job by him so far. So let's see um, what else he's got. Miami Marlins. Now, now the, the Marlins, Marlins are doing are that, that thing where they pitch really well, well, as they should. They have, they have a very talented rotation. rotation. The bullpen's, bullpen's been surprisingly good. good. They've, They've had, had some live arms out there. But the, the offense, offense is definitely lacking. lacking. Like, they, they do have an inability to score runs. runs. There's, There's just not a lot of firepower there. For me, I think they probably are more of a not terrible, but because of how many teams can make the playoffs, I think they are more on this on-the-bubble standpoint. Currently second in the division in the National League East, 9 8 They're outperforming expectations, and I think they will probably hang around this 500 level right now, which means to me they're on the bubble. The St. Louis Cardinals are a pretty strong team. Professional baseball. They play clean defense. They hit the ball. They have good pitching. Good bullpen. Everything about this team, if you had to give it a grade, it's like a B. Everything is good, and their their fielding's like A+, plus, S tier. Disgusting. I think they're a postseason team. I think they are better right now, and I think might be better as the season goes on. Then the Mariners and the Rays, which makes me feel really, really weird about this, but they've got Arenado, who's having an MVP season. Goldschmidt's incredible. Out in the outfield, Tyler O'Neill is so sick. Harrison Bader's a solid player. Pitching's been really strong. I think they're a postseason team for sure. The Houston Astros. The Astros, I think, you know, if you told me coming into the year they're a postseason team, I'd believe you. But I think they kind of go on the bubble right now. They're just not looking that good. The Astros are tough, man. The Astros are tough because if you would have told me at the beginning of the year, I think you could put them in a contender top tier postseason team category. Right now, I think they're kind of towards the back end of postseason team. I almost thought about putting them on the bubble. I had a really hard time with this one. Starting rotation, it's Framber and JV. Verlander has looked great, but that's it. The other starters have not not picked up the slack. The bullpen is still cash money. The bullpen is still fantastic, and they still have a pretty solid offense along with Jeremy Pena coming on and being an absolute beast, but we're starting to see that there are a few more holes in this team than we thought, and based on how they're playing and based on how their pitching looks on the start rotation side, I think for now, I'm going to put them here in the postseason team tier. The Atlanta Braves, my goodness, this is so tough. I'm not going to put them on the bubble, am I? But getting Ronald Acuna back, I think that's going to be a huge, huge push for their offense. I'm going to put them right now, right behind the Houston Astros. Offensively, still great, and getting around Acuna will definitely inject a ton of offense into this lineup. It's just been the pitching. The pitching has been shaky. Go figure. Kyle Wright's been their best pitcher this year. A guy who has had trouble in the past, but Charlie Morton looks bad. Ian Anderson looks bad. Bryce Elder's just not that great. And Waskar Yanoa looks horrendous. The bullpen also has been shaky. They're good. World Series hangover. That's what I'm talking about for. I'm not willing to put them on the bubble just yet. I still think they're a postseason caliber team. Just maybe on the back end right now. But getting around Acuna, I mean, they'll probably just they'll probably just jump right back up to here. Honestly, I'll put them ahead of the Rays and the Astros. I changed my mind. I do think they're better than them. Baltimore Orioles. Sorry, guys. Your cheeks. You're bad. Sorry, Baltimore. It's not very good. They played a little bit better than we thought at the beginning of the year like they always do. The bullpen is improved. The pitching looks like it's slightly better, but losing John Means is a killer. I don't know how they will perform over an entire stretch of the year. They just don't score a lot of runs, and they're not good enough pitching to win games without scoring runs. So, Jose Ramirez, Stephen Kwan. All right. So, so far, he's the teams that he's placed um, after the uh, – after that initial four or five teams, more or less I agree with what he's got here. Um, I think that the Astros are still a postseason team. I think that the uh, Rays are, um, or not the Rays, the uh, Astros are a postseason team. I think you would put Miami on the bubble. Um, the Cardinals are definitely a postseason team. I mean, they everything he said about the Cardinals is correct. They're a professional team. They play good defense. They don't beat themselves very often. Uh, that's true. The Braves, yeah, the Braves postseason team, uh, I'm still not uh, convinced that they're like an on-the-bubble or worse 
uh, team yet. And, um, and of course, the Orioles, yes. The Orioles are not, they're not there yet. They are improving. The Orioles are getting better, but they're in a tough division and um and the american league is tough too so uh yeah i agree with the i agree with his placement on those um so far the uh you know the next four or five teams so let's go on and see what else he's got Owen Miller are cool, but they're starting to cool off a little bit. Jose's still great, but everyone else is starting to come back to earth. The pitching's always strong. They're definitely an on-the-bubble team. I would put them slightly ahead of Miami because I do think that they probably are a better team top to bottom. And in that division, they always got a chance. Colorado Rockies, they're going to be my first not terrible. And I know that they're playing decently well. They're 10-8, and eight, but they can't pitch for anything. Their run differential is horrible. 95 runs allowed, that's like among the most in Major League Baseball. The teams they're around are going to be in the Cheeks bad category. They can't pitch, but they will hit. So for that reason, I'll put them in not terrible. They'll win games at home you always play well in Colorado they're gonna stink on the road there's not a lot of consistency in this team Detroit Tigers boy oh boy am I incredible Incredibly disappointed by this team. Torkelson's looks all right. Rookie stuff you see him doing, but they can't score for the life of them. The pitching's actually kind of fine. It's kind of okay. But they can't score. They can't score, and the pitching's not good enough again to not score and win games. I really want to put them in the not terrible, but I think they go in cheeks right now. I think they're better than the Orioles. I think the talent on this roster is better, and I think as the season goes on, they will improve. But to see what they've done this first month of the year and just not consider them that bad it would be crazy. Along with the Kansas City Royals, who are technically in front of them in the standings, but I do think are a worse team. Still better than the Orioles. They have some players. They have a great bullpen. I love the arms in the bullpen. While the numbers might not lean towards it, they have talent out there. Just the starting rotation is not great. The offense, again, cannot score. Cannot score at all. And I think their pitching overall is worse than Detroit. Better than Baltimore. I'll put them in the Chiefs bad sorry category. Milwaukee Brewers. I think the Brewers are definitely a postseason team. Not a contender like I once thought. Their offense has a really, really hard time scoring as well. Of course, still really strong pitching, although it's a little not as sharp as it once was. Still early in the year after that short spring training. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the postseason team tier category. I'm going to put them slightly in front of the Braves, behind the Mariners. It might sound crazy to put them relatively close to these teams, but I am really concerned about this offense. They just can't find a lot of runs right now. It doesn't matter how good your pitching is. If you can't score runs, you can't win games. So, Alright, so so far, we've got the next four teams that he's done. Uh, Cleveland, Detroit, the Royals, and Milwaukee. Um, the only one I disagree with him on is Detroit. Uh, he's got Detroit down there in the uh, bad team category. And I don't think, I mean, I was high on Detroit coming into the season. I thought they were going to have a, and now I agree with him that I am disappointed with how well they've done so far um, in relation to how I thought they were going to do. But I think that's just getting off to a slow start. Also, maybe partially due to spring training, the hitters are behind the pitchers. So uh, I think that Detroit is probably got to be up in not, at least not terrible. Um, probably not on the bubble, though. So, yeah, I would put Detroit in not terrible. But he's got Cleveland on the bubble. Yeah, I could see Cleveland being on the bubble. So far, they've uh, played uh, better than I expected them to play coming out of the, um, you know, coming out of the stocks, out of the uh, uh, starting gate. And the Royals, uh, yeah, he's got the Royals right. I think he's pegged the Royals right. They still are a, a bad team. And Milwaukee, yes, Milwaukee postseason team. Um, I wouldn't quite put them up in Toronto's um, class. So, and I certainly wouldn't put them in elite. So, yeah, I think he's got them well placed where he put them. I think, I think they're still, they're still very good. good. The Los, Los Angeles, Angeles Angels. Angels. The Angels, I think, are a postseason team. I can't believe I'm saying this. They're 12-7 and seven on the year. They're playing really good baseball. They're scoring a ton of runs. This offense is high-powered. And what did you expect? Mike Trapp is back and healthy. And, oh, it's so great to see. Shohei Otani is sick. He hasn't even clicked yet. Anthony Rendon. Taylor Ward, Brandon Marsh. Everyone's clicking right now. They're playing good baseball. I really do think that they belong more in this on the bubble. But I think based on the way they're playing, why can't they be better than the Houston Astros? They're scoring way more runs. And only giving up a few more? I think they deserve to go in this postseason team tier category. The bullpen's been better. The pitching's been better. I think they're in that conversation as a legit postseason team. Still behind the Rays, though. I just top to bottom. It's, it, there's definitely a discrepancy in this roster. Oakland A's. The Oakland A's are surprisingly not that bad. Like, they are above 500. They're 10 and 9. I don't know how they're doing it. I mean, I do know their pitching has been unbelievable. The starting pitching's been great. Paul Blackburn, Montas after a rough start. Paul Irvin, they're getting really, really good starting pitching. And they should be on the bubble. Based on how they're playing right 
right now, they are a team that maybe could sneak into a wild card spot. But I think they're only going to get worse as the year goes on, I'm not going to lie. I put them slightly in front of the Colorado Rockies because the pitching, I think they're not terrible, but I don't think they're good. I don't think they're a playoff team. The Philly, the Phillies, the Phillies, the Phillies. You guys know me. I am one of the biggest Philly haters out there. They're doing exactly what we expected. Scoring a ton of runs while also giving up a ton of runs. 83 runs allowed. Puts them in a category that's not the absolute worst in baseball, but definitely not in the same tier as those good teams. But then offensively, they're scoring a lot of runs like those good teams. I'm going to put Philly slightly ahead of Cleveland. I think the pitching is going to improve. Like, Zach Wheeler's not this bad. Ranger Suarez is not this bad. Aaron Nola is going to figure it out. Those guys on the pitching side are going to sharpen up along with the bullpen, I think, as well. And they do score a lot of runs. It's just there's not a whole lot of talent outside, outside the top tier on Philadelphia, which is why I have them on the bubble. So, so even though the part three and ten, they're bad, they're terrible, they're not good. I'll put them here. I'll put them in Chiefs bad. Sorry, I do think they're worse than the Kansas City Royals. Eh, I think they're better than the Royals, worse than the Tigers. They have some players, Brian Hayes, Brian Reynolds, still very good. And Vogelbach, love Vogie. The pitching hasn't been the worst in the world, but it has been bad. And I know their run differential kind of gets jacked up because of that 21 run game against the Cubs. But let's be honest, guys, they're eight and ten right now. It's only going to get worse. It is only going to get worse. Sin all right, so uh, the next four teams that we're going to go over are his placement of the Angels, the uh, the A's, the Phillies, and the Pirates. I think he nailed all of these um, pretty well. Um, he's got the Angels up in postseason team, and I think certainly if they can keep playing like they have, and I don't see a reason really why they wouldn't, um, that they should be. Uh, right in there in the postseason mix. Uh, the A's, not terrible. Yeah, that's exactly what I would say about them. That's, I mean, what else are you going to say about them? They're not terrible. Uh, but I wouldn't put them on the bubble, I don't think, especially in that division, um, that uh, they're going to be um, on the bubble for a possible playoff spot. Not going to happen. Uh, Philadelphia on the bubble, yeah. Um, that's exactly, you know, when, like he said, when you assemble a team of DHs, you're going to have a lot of scoring, but the pitching hasn't been quite been there. Um, it should improve though, as he also mentioned. So yeah, I would say the Phillies are definitely on the bubble and then Pittsburgh down there with the bad teams. Um, I'm, I think that this is a good placement for the Pirates if you look at their roster. What they you could really reasonably expect from them is probably to put them down with the Orioles, the Royals, and um, and really Detroit doesn't belong there in my opinion. But um, yeah, I don't know if you can really put them in not terrible because um, they really should be. Now, they have played over their heads so far. They have played better than uh, putting them in the bottom category. But I think over the course of the entire season, they will prove to not be that good. So let's go on. San Diego Padres. I will admit I am definitely more of a hater of this roster than I probably should have been. But also at the same time, like people have them as like one of the best teams in baseball. I just, I wasn't that high on them. I think they are better though than I expected, worse than some people thought they would be. They are performing well without Tatis and they're doing that class thing where Eric Cosmo plays well, Machado's playing like an MVP. Starting pitching is always going to be a question mark to me. Outside of Musgrove and Darvish, it's a question mark. Although Gore has looked fantastic, Tendi Gore's looked sick. I'm going to put them in the postseason team tier category. I'm going to put them slightly, and I'm going to put them kind of at the top of it. They're playing really well. They are impressing me. The NOS is loaded. Padres are part of it. This team is good. I was wrong about them. They're just a very good team. The Texas Rangers got to be one of the most disappointing teams. They're basically a worse version of the Phillies. Like, they score a lot of runs. They don't really pitch that well, and they just lose games because when you score less than you give up, it's, it's hard to win. You almost can't do it. In fact, you can't. But I'm not willing to put them in the Chiefs bad category. I'll put them behind the Colorado Rockies and A's right now. A little bit is because of how they're playing. A little bit because of how they're pitching. They have Seager and Simeon. They have good players with Dolores Garcia, like, they have talent. It's just not really clicking right now. And I don't know if it will this year. They're a year or two away. The Boston Red Sox. Oh, boy. The Red Sox are really tough. Are they on the bubble? Probably. They're probably an on-the-bubble team. They're probably going to figure it out and get stronger as the year goes on. But, man, the pitching's bad. The pitching is not good. And I just, I don't have faith in the pitching. The offense is going to score. But, boy, where do I put them? Like, they're kind of performing like these teams. Oh, man. 
I'll put them on the bubble. bubble. I think they're they're better better than Miami. Miami. I think they're better than Cleveland. I'll I'll put them on the bubble right behind the Phillies, but I don't feel good about this one. It just doesn't feel like they're really clicking just yet. Still talented with Devers and Bogarts, J.D. Martinez, Verdugo. They're good. Trevor Story's starting to heat up a little bit. Snow pitching. Snow pitching. San Francisco Giants. Elite. They're elite. They're one of the best teams in baseball. They're absolutely disgusting. 13 and 6 right now when I'm recording this. They score a ton of runs. They don't give up a lot of runs. I just don't know how you could think they're not elite. They're kind of in this next tier of elite, I think, that you'll see me talk about here. All right, so the next few, um, the only one I disagree with him on in in his next uh, few teams, and uh, that was San Diego, Texas, (coughs) Boston, and San Francisco. The only one I disagree with is Boston. He's got Boston um, on the bubble. I don't think Boston's going to end up on the bubble. I think they're going to be not terrible. They're a not terrible team. I think last year they overplayed. They um, they played above their ability. They, uh, what do they say, uh, punched above their weight class or something last year. And uh, I, I don't see it happening again this year. Kind of like with the Rays. They just, they played way better last year than they really were. And uh, they... Uh, I don't see him. I see him. I would put him in not terrible. Uh, but yeah, San Diego, he's got postseason team. Yeah, it looks like they can be, especially when later this year they get Tati back at uh, shortstop. They, they'll they be even better then. Um, Texas, I like this characterization of Texas as a, uh, like basically a poor man's Phillies, which is, I would say that's true. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, and then San Francisco and Elite. I like San Francisco up in Elite. I think that they, for whatever reason, I mean, if you look at their roster, they don't look like an elite team, but they, I mean, all of last year, they went wire to wire playing like an elite team. And so far out of the gates, they're playing like an elite team too. Um now they, you know, there's there's things like they lost Gosman and they replaced him with Rodon. And as a White Sox fan, I can tell you, Rodon has some potential red flags. Like he could be injured. I wouldn't be surprised to see Rodon not finish the season out. But if he does and he keeps pitching like he is, and he also relies on uh, pinpoint command and getting strike calls on non-strikes. Uh, but if that all of that keeps working. And the Giants, I mean, you know, I yeah, I would put him in the lead. I think he's right. So I just disagree with his Boston placement. I think that they're a not terrible. So incredibly, so incredibly good. good. Pitching well, they're hitting well, everything, everything is, is clicking. This team is sick and they don't even have megastar. Just crazy. The Los Angeles Dodgers are also sick. Do I think they're better than the Giants? I think ever so slightly. And it's just because of the names, it really is. Like when you look at the two rosters put together, you're always going to choose the Dodgers. A blind test, they're about the same. But it's the Dodgers, they're just an all star team. Literally, it's an all star team. They added Freddie Freeman to a team that had Trey Turner and Cody Bellinger, who's now playing really good again, and Mookie Betts. And Justin Turner stinks right now, but it doesn't matter. Gavin Lux is playing well, and Will Smith is sick, and the pitching's off. They're so good. They're probably the best team in baseball. The Arizona Diamondbacks can't really score runs. Pitching okay, but they can't really score runs. I'm going to put them at the top of Cheeks Bad Sorry, which might be a little aggressive. Maybe they go behind the Tigers in front of the Pirates. The pitching is definitely improved, and that's what happens when you get Brent Strom over from Houston with this team, but there's not a whole lot of firepower on this offense, so they're definitely in the bottom tier. Those New York Mets, my favorite team. I'm literally wearing the shirt today. You guys know where I'm putting them. I'm putting them in elite. They're playing unbelievably good. Is it a little bit lucky? Maybe, but also is this just maybe the Mets that they are? I think so. They are better than the Giants. Took three or four from them. Three of the six losses the Giants have this year are from the New York Mets. I'm gonna put the Giants in the lead. I'm putting the Mets just slightly in front of them. I do think they're still a little bit behind the Dodgers, especially without Degrom. We need to see him come back and be healthy. But boy, oh boy, has this Mets team been great. The offense is clicking. Lindor's playing great. McNeil is back. P. Alonso's hitting for power. Brandon Nimmo's getting on base. Eduardo Escobar. The only real issue right now is like the bullpen a little bit. Bullpen's been a little shaky, and the fact that we keep playing Robinson Cano so much. So yeah. I 
think they're, they're, they're probably, probably the second, second best team in baseball. baseball. Chicago, Chicago White Sox. Sox. Man, the White Sox are letting me down. White Sox are really, really letting me down. There's a chance they're just not very good. I'm just saying this. I've been saying it for a while now. you got to fire Tony La Russa. you got to get him out of there. you got to start over. You need to play smart baseball because this roster is good, but they play bad baseball. And you know who that comes down to? The manager. The leadership. The leadership's horrendous in Chicago for the White Sox. Terrible. They're hitting Larry Garcia high up in the line. Larry Garcia shouldn't be playing. The guy stinks. The White Sox are legitimately in trouble. Like, I'll put them on the bubble. I'll put them at the end. That's where I believe they are. I think they're at the end on the bubble. The pitching is certifyingly bad without Lance Lynn and Giolito. They should be in the not terrible category, though, based on how they're playing right now. They're not. All right, so let's go over that four. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I, all right, I'm going to start off with the White Sox. Um, I, I disagree with him on the White Sox. I think they just got off to a bad start. We're not even a third of the way through the season yet. I don't think it's time to panic. He's right about La Russa. I wish they would fire La Russa. I wanted him to hire A.J. Hinch. When they originally hired La Russa, I think he's too old. I think the game has passed him by. And he does make some questionable decisions. Uh, but I still expect the White Sox to overcome that. Eventually, at some point, Lance Lynn will be back probably in May, I heard. So um, I, I'm going to say the White Sox are generally still a postseason team. I would put them in postseason team. Still, I um, you know maybe in another... 20 games, 25 games, 30 games, you're going to convince me of otherwise, and I'll say that, yeah, he was right. But right now, I'd have them as a postseason team. Uh, as far as the uh, Dodgers, Arizona, and the Mets, I think he was correct. Got his Mets up there in elite. Got to wait. You got to love it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I expected the Mets to do well. And, really, they are a team that last year, I think, underperformed their roster. They did worse than they should have based on their roster last year. And I think this year uh, they're finally playing to their roster. And like he said, especially when they get DeGrom back, once DeGrom comes back, man, is that going to be a team. So yeah, they, they're they good and elite. Um, yeah, and Arizona is is bad. They're, they are bad. And then, uh, you know, and then the Dodgers, of course, Everybody expected the Dodgers to be all world, and so far they haven't disappointed. So let's move on to his last four picks. Scoring, scoring runs. runs. That's, That's what we thought they would be good at, scoring. scoring. They, they can't, can't do it. it. Minnesota, Minnesota Twins. Twins. The Minnesota, Minnesota Twins, Twins, in theory, are a postseason team, but I really do think they're more so on the bubble here, and that's more so because the division's a little bit weak. Like, they are a postseason team because of the division they're in. But in the grand scheme of baseball, they're on the bubble, so if they don't win the division, I don't know if they make the playoffs. That's kind of where I'm at right now with the Twins. But they are good. I think this is a good team. On this bubble right here is not necessarily that you're bad. I think it's just average and above. And they haven't even had Carlos Correa play well yet, so. So take a look at what the Twins do. Byron Buxton's having an MVP season because he's absolutely disgusting. There's still a lot of question marks here, but they are much better than they were last year. Chicago Cubs. I think the Cubs going not terrible. They aren't terrible. Just don't think they're very good. And their run differential, of course, jacked up by the 21 run performance, just like the Pirates was jacked down. Are they better than the A's, Rockies, and Rangers? Probably, probably not. I don't know. Their offense is decent. Their pitching is decent. I kind of like them here. I think I like them right there. That's where they feel good for me with the Chicago Cubs. Not terrible, not the worst. The Washington Nationals, they're one of the worst teams in baseball. If it wasn't for Juan Soto, Nelson Cruz, and Josh Bell, I don't know if they could win any games. The roster is just really, really bad. Not a whole lot of talent. The pitching, the bullpen, it's horrendous. They're one of the worst teams in baseball. But because they have Juan Soto, Nelson Cruz, and Josh Bell, I mean, just Juan Soto alone puts them at the top of the worst, if that makes sense. Because it's Juan Soto. He's that good. And then the Cincinnati Reds are the worst team in baseball. Bab Castellini should be embarrassed. I can't believe he went on TV and said, where else are they going to go? They could go root for any other team. They don't need to continue to all right, so we know the, the final placement here on these teams. Uh, the final four were Minnesota, the Cubs, the Nats, and the Reds. And I do agree with his placement of all of those teams. The Nationals have deteriorated to the point where they're just a shell of what they used to be and not really not good. The Reds, the Reds have, they came into the season trying not to be good, and they're succeeding in that. Um, and the Cubs, he's got in uh, not terrible. And yeah, I mean, I think that's about the best you can say about the Cubs right now is that they're not terrible. 
And then uh, Minnesota on the bubble. I think that that's, I think they have the potential to get themselves into the postseason team category. But right now, I think that that placement is about where I would have them. He is right about the Central. It's uh, every team is closely stacked together. Even the White Sox, as bad as they are, they're in like second or third. Um, so, you know, any any team could in that division could make a move and um, and put themselves in the postseason uh, category. Um, but I mean, because you notice he doesn't have any of the AL Central teams in the postseason, but one of them has to be. So. We'll see whether my White Sox can overcome that and get out of that on the bubble category, but I think he's got the Twins placed correct. So what do you guys think of his placement and my uh, commentary on where I think they should be? Because I agreed with most of them. Uh, Giraffe Neck Mark, again, great channel. A lot of baseball content. The man knows his baseball, and he is a huge Mets fan. But for right now, that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.